Howdy, Andrew here. And today I would like to teach you how to find the intercepts and end behaviors of several functions by using the calculator. All right, if you need a different method though, if you want to find out how to do it algebraically, check out uh, links in the description below. I'll leave you uh, links there for videos that we've done on that topic. Uh, without further ado, let's get down to it. So what are the intercepts and end behaviors of the following functions? So the first one we have over here is going to be f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 15x. First thing, go to your calculator, plug in the function. All right, so we're going to do x raised to the third, hit the over arrow to bring the cursor back down, then minus, hit the minus sign, not the negative sign, be careful, okay, minus 2x uh, squared, and then minus 15x. All right, now hit graph. And we get a nice little output here. And it looks like we could zoom out just a touch, right? Because it looks like the graph comes up, and then it's going to curve up here somewhere, comes down, going to curve, All right? So maybe let's zoom out. We really don't need to, but let's zoom out a little bit, okay? So I'm going to go to window. Um, I'm actually going to change my x value. So let's go to negative 8 all the way up to 8. And then the minimum, let's go down to maybe negative 20 for the y, and then go up to, I don't know, 20. All right, and we'll scale it by, you know, yeah, ones are fine. And then hit graph again. So that's a little better. That'll do it. I probably got to go down a little more, but we're going to start to lose some uh, resolution here. So this will be good enough. All right, so let's analyze this picture. All right, so by using a graph now, how can we tell the uh, intercepts and end behaviors? So first, let's look at the end behavior. All right, end behavior is talking about what happens all the way out on the leftmost side of the graph and then what happens all the way out on the rightmost side of the graph. Okay, that's what they mean by end behavior. What happens at the ends? All right. In other words, as x goes on and on and on to negative infinity, the y value is going to continue to go on and on and on to negative infinity as well, right? This graph is going to trail on down there forever. So that's the leftmost end behavior. Okay, as x goes to negative infinity, that's the left behavior, or excuse me, that's the uh, left side, then the y value will go to negative infinity. All right, that would be the end behavior on the left side. And then if we go to the right side now, it's good, right, it's going to go on and on and on forever in this direction. So as x gets larger and larger in the positive direction now, meaning as x goes to positive infinity, all right, the uh, y value then will go to also positive infinity. And that's what the end behavior is. That's all it is. Fairly straightforward. All right. Now let's do the intercepts. So you have three locations in which case there it crosses uh, the axes. So one location is here, one location is here, and one location is here. So if I look at this in terms of the x-intercepts, right, if I draw my x-axis, if I just highlighted it basically, you can see that the graph intersects the x-axis in three locations, right? And you can also tell that the y-axis Right, there's only one location of intersection. Okay, so we should have three values basically for the x-intercepts and one value for the y. Okay, you can state them as coordinates if you would like. It really doesn't matter uh, too much. I'm going to state them as coordinates. Okay, so what's the coordinate of this point which represents an x-intercept? Right, so I'm going to write it over here. So x-intercept. Uh, let's write equals the coordinates of this point. Now will be remember these tick marks represent a unit of one. Okay, so it's going to be 1, 2, 3. That means negative 3 because it's going to the left. 0, right? Because y is 0. Then the other x-intercept right here, that looks like it's going to be at the origin, right? So that's going to be 0, comma 0. And then the other x-intercept, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we've got to go out 5 spaces to the right, so that's positive, and 5, comma 0. So if you notice, what they have in common is that the y value is always 0, and guess what? That's always going to be the case for the x-intercept. Okay. Now the y-intercept is only one value, as we said, and we can clearly see that it not only was that an x-intercept value, but this is also a y-intercept value. So it's going to be 0, 0. Okay, that's where it crosses the y-axis. So those would be the values. Okay, that's how you would get it from a graph. All right. Now if you wanted, you can also go to your table function. So go to second. So let me just, uh, let me just delete this. All right. And let's go now to the table. So hit second table. And here we have a table output now. All right, so let me get within the range here. All right, that looks pretty good. So let me copy that table on in, okay? So my table, as you can see, it's incremented by one unit every time. And we can see clearly, uh, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. All right, that's enough of that. Um, don't ask me why I do that. Uh, negative three 
and 0, we have 0, 0, and 5, 0. So those were the three values, look, right, of the x-intercepts. And also, this one value here turned out to also be a y-intercept, okay? So you can get it from the table as well. So hopefully that helps. Now, just remember one thing again, I'll repeat it again. When you want to find x-intercepts, you have to look for the values, in which case y is 0, okay? When you want to find y-intercepts, you have to locate the values where x is 0, all right? And that's how it works. Um, okay, so let's get rid of all this stuff. And we'll bring this on over to this side. Okay, cool. Now let's take a look at the second function. So again, go to your y equals, just clear it on out, and let's plug this in, okay? So x cubed, x cubed, minus 0 0.01x. Then hit graph. Cool. So maybe I'll zoom in a little bit, or let, let's do zoom standard now. Let's do zoom, zoom 6. There you go. All right, and maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. Why not, right? Because it looks like, according to that, um, it looks like it's going to go on and on and on. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Okay, so now we have this, right? So let's first talk about the end behavior of this particular function. So as the graph goes on and on and on to the left, in other words, as x goes to negative infinity, what's happening to the y value? It's also going to negative infinity, right? So as x goes to negative infinity, y will also be going to negative infinity. Cool. And then we can look at this in the other direction, right? On the right-hand side, as the graph is going to continue on upwards forever, so in other words, as the x is becoming more and more positive, so as x is going to positive infinity, the y value, therefore, will also be going to positive infinity as going on up, all right? And if you notice, this wasn't, you know, by chance, if the leading, you know, if the leading term here is going to be x cubed, and the leading term here is going to be x cubed, guess what? They're going to have the same end behavior, Okay. That's not by accident, ladies and gentlemen. Now, with that out of the way, we've got to figure out the x and the y-intercepts. Now, this one's easy. There's only one value. Now, this might be a little hard to tell from the graph. It might say, well, how do you know it's exactly at the origin and, 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 and whatnot? Um, so it that that is a little tough. What you can do is you can definitely go to your, if you wanted, to your uh, uh, table, right? So you can hit second table. Now, we can clearly see here uh, that I won't sing it again. Don't worry. Um, you can clearly see here that the oh, I want to though so badly. I don't know why. But anyway, um, you can see you can see clearly. Now the rain is gone. Okay, enough. You can see clearly that the um, you ever have that happen where you just like mentally can't move on past a certain thought. I hope it doesn't happen to you. Um, so here we have. You can clearly see that x is zero and y is also going to be. Uh, zero, right? So we we do have that value for the x and a y. And that is the x, and that is also the y-intercept. All right. So let me just jot that down. Okay. So we have that the x-intercept is going to be one second. Sorry, x-intercept is going to be equal to zero comma zero, and the y-intercept here is going to also be equal to 0, 0. Now the question is though, do we have any other x-intercepts, right? So maybe let's go to the graph and zoom in a little more. So let's do zoom in number 2. Hit enter. Okay, still doesn't really say much. Why don't we zoom in again, right? Go to zoom in number 2. Okay, how about maybe a little more? Why don't we go zoom in again? Okay. Now what's interesting, let's zoom in one more time. Number 2, enter. Right, if you notice, this is starting to come down here a little bit, right? We actually might have another x-intercept. Now, this is very deceiving, but let's change the window a little bit, okay? Let's go to uh, x-min of 0, all right? Let's go to x-max of, uh, why don't we go to x-max of 1, okay? And we'll scale this all by 0.1. Then your y-minimum value, let's go to a y-minimum of... Yeah, it's pretty small as it is, right? So let's go to negative 0. 0.0000, I don't know, 1. Okay, let's go to a y max of 0. 0.00001. All right. And yeah, leave it as that scale. That doesn't matter. Now let's hit graph. So we actually now can see something's going on here, right? Something's definitely going on here. And as you can see, it's crossing that x-axis now. Now remember, my x-axis started at 0, 
and it went up all the way to 1, and I incremented it by 0.1 units, okay? So I incremented this by 0.1 units. So it went 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, right? We can now see that this is also crossing the x-axis at 0.1, right? At 0.1. Do you see that? Now, if that's a little hard to see, let's use the table. Okay, it's, tables usually help us out. So let's just confirm it. Go to second table set, start your table at zero, and then increment it by 0.1 units. Now hit second graph to bring up your table. Now look, notice here how this also, the graph also has a y value of zero. And remember we said that your x-intercepts will be found when y is equal to zero. It has a second x-intercept here at 0.1, okay? This is sometimes the limitations of using the calculator though, right? You might say, well, how am I supposed to know that? You know, when I look at this graph, it doesn't look like it's gonna cross again over here at 0.1. I mean, it does, it, not at all. How would I know to zoom in? I agree. I don't think it's the best way to use the calculator on this particular problem. That's why you want to know multiple methods. That's why I highly suggest you check out the links in the description for a more algebraic view of how to approach this. All right. But, you know, given how you, uh, given the calculator, this is how you would approach it. You'd have to know a little bit about it. You'd want to check yourself, maybe zoom in a little bit, see what happens. All right. So we do have a second though, X intercept there at 0.1. So let me just get that out of the way. And I'm going to add here now 0.1 comma zero. And those are now all of the intercepts here for the second uh, graph, right? So let's just bring this, make this neat. And these would then be the final values. All right, guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this helps. Please help us out by liking and subscribing, maybe even telling some of your classmates, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.